Uh, you can start any time you want to. Hi, I'm Kelly Clifton with Hydronic Specialists. We are a hydronic or water-based system mechanical contracting company. In this home, we have installed an in-floor radiant heating and in-floor radiant cooling system. We're using the, you know, so we are presenting hot water to the floor system through a network of tubing running through the floor system at 12 inch and 8 inch centers. So this home has about um, three miles of, of uh, tubing in its 4,000 square feet. I believe that's right. But um, anyway, so <clears throat> for the space heating, we are presenting warm water for, you know, through an in-floor radiant heating network of tubing. For the cooling, we're absorbing heat through the same infrastructure. We are actually running cool water through the tubing. And um, in a little bit, I'll explain to you how we measure dew point and um, we measure the humidity level, extrapolate the dew point with a DDC control and are very careful never to present um, temperatures of water that might cause condensation any place inside of the structure. The system is powered by this ground sourced heat pump. The ground sourced heat pump extracts heat from the ground from a network of um, tubing, of piping, in a well field outside of the home. This home has about 2,000 foot of uh, tubing in um, four 250 foot deep wells. Each well has 500 feet of tube and uh, it, it equates to about a five ton loop field. This is a five ton heat pump. The heat pump, uh, when it's in heating mode, we pump heat we extract heat from the from the ground, basically condense it in here, and then store it in this tank over here. This tank right here is our heating buffer tank. From this tank, the water is pumped through the network of tubing in the floors. This tank is operated or the water that's presented to the floors is operated, um, the water temperature presented to the floors is operated on outdoor reset, on an outdoor reset curve, which means that in the warmer outdoor temperature, we present very low temperature water starting around 80 degrees at about 58 degrees outdoor temperature. And as the outdoor temperature decreases, we gradually increase the water, the temperature of water presented to the floor. So at one below zero, we will present 110 degree water to the floor. We'll be any place in between depending on the outdoor temperature. This was uh, the parameters used for determining the outdoor sensor or the outdoor reset curve um, were derived by doing a room to room heat loss for the structure. that we generate with the heat pump is stored in this buffer tank from where it's distributed to the in-floor system in the home. In the cooling mode, we store the chilled water in this cooling buffer tank and the water is then distributed when we're doing cooling. We absorb water through the in-floor network and bring it back to this tank and then back to the heat pump. This system also has two small high, mounted, high wall mounted fan coils that we use for dehumidification so that we can manipulate the temperature of water that we present to the floor and um, mitigate any concerns with condensation, unwanted condensation in the structure. The ground source heat pump also provides heat from its desuperheater to this 120 gallon solar storage tank. So the ground source heat pump, when it's running, 
produces a significant amount of hot water for this tank. The rest, the, it might bring this tank up to 90, possibly 100 degrees. The rest of the tank is, is topped off with two 4x10 hot water solar panels. And this is a solar drain back tank. Um, we installed a, a drain back type system for heating the water in this tank. When this tank is satisfied, when we have 120, or 120 gallons of 135 degree water, we're actually taking solar heat from the panels and running, them, running it to a heat exchanger over here that you can see as well as insulated. We're actually tempering the ground loop with solar energy. We're putting maybe seven, 8,000 BTU an hour back into the ground through this heat exchanger. Up here, we see a DDC control, a series of transformers, and a few um, other smaller input controls for our DDC control. This is a control that's primarily used for building automation on uh, high-rise projects, you know, schools, uh, hotels, hospitals, anything with multiple air handlers. Um, we, we use it because it's of its capability of accepting up to 20 different sensor inputs and it's uh, many, and its ability to do uh, up to 20 switched outputs. Um, it can also do some other interesting um, variable voltage outputs that uh, come in handy for managing uh, um, HVAC equipment. This home has four remote manifolds for the radiant system. Two of those manifolds are right here in the mechanical room, and two of them are located, one is located on the far end of the lower level, and one is located on the uh, far end of the upper level. It's a flow controlling manifold so that um, we can actually monitor and um, adjust and balance the flow that goes to each remote manifold. We know how many BTUs a, water, a gallon of water can transport and we want to, we balance the amount of water that goes to, that's available to each manifold so that they all get the appropriate amount of flow, no more and no less.